Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. So glad you could join us today. Yeah, we are happy to be together, even like this. Mm -hmm. Mommy, don't yes. you love this note? It's so beautiful. It really is. I hope you're all enjoying it too. Yes, and today I hope you're going to enjoy learning some great stuff from God's Word. Wait. So right now, we're going to hear from our teachers. Let's have a look. Can't wait. Good morning, class. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning, class. So what are we going to do today? We're going to play a quick game, and it's all about change. Oh, like the change I've got in my pocket? No, it's about changing... Not about money. Changing your facial expressions. And we're going to guess which facial expression Mr. Mellinger is going to change. So you ready? Okay. All right, one, two, three. All right. Did you guess he's sticking his tongue out? Was that it? Yes, that was it. Oh, yes, that's it. Here we can do it. One more time, and then go one, two, three. Turn around. Oh, he shut one of his eyes. Is that it? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And one more time. Oh, he's blinking. Is that what you guessed? Is that right? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so Mr. Mellinger changed his facial expression. Yes, he did. But today, we're going to talk about Jacob changing more than facial expressions. We're going to talk about yes. changing his life and his attitude yes. and his relationship with Esau. So stay tuned as someone tells us the story of Jacob and Esau. Yes. Jacob and Esau meet again. Genesis chapter 29. While Jacob lived with his uncle Laban, he became a shepherd. He fell in love and got married. God blessed Jacob with many sons. Jacob also had many sheep, donkeys, and camels. One day, God told Jacob to go back to his homeland. Jacob wanted to go back, but he was afraid of his brother Esau. He thought Esau would still be angry with him. But Jacob obeyed God. He and his family packed up everything they owned. Jacob sent servants ahead to offer gifts to Esau. Much to Jacob's surprise, Esau ran to meet him, and he gave Jacob a big hug. They were so happy to see each other again. Brothers, we learned the past two weeks Jacob wasn't always that good a guy. Boys and girls, what are some of the things that we learned about Jacob the first week? Well, one thing we learned was that he was deceitful and dishonest. How would you describe Jacob's relationship with his brother at the beginning? Not a good one, was it? No, it was not. In fact, Esau was so angry with Jacob that he wanted to kill him. So Jacob had to leave home and move away. And one thing that happened to Jacob once he left his family was that God appeared to him in an amazing dream. God promised to be with Jacob, to bless him and protect him. And God told Jacob that he had a plan for his life to bless the whole world. That was an important dream and an important moment in Jacob's life. Yes, it was. And Jacob promised God that if he kept his promises, Jacob would worship and honor God all the days of his life. Yes. Now, 20 years had passed, and God told Jacob it was time for him to return home. You think Jacob was the same person he was when he left home? No, he wasn't. Not after 20 years. Let's look at some of the before and after features to learn what changes God made in Jacob's life. Let's do it. Early in Jacob's life, Jacob disobeyed God. He broke God's rules. He tricked his dad to get a blessing from God. He chose his way instead of following God's way. And now, after, Jacob was obedient to God. When God told Jacob to go back to his home in Bethel, he gathered his family and all the things he had and he owned, and he obeyed God. Before God changed Jacob, Jacob was dishonest, a deceiver and a tricker. He tricked his brother Esau to get the special privilege of a birthright. He lied and deceived his own dad to receive God's special blessing. Now, Jacob was a peacemaker. 
Jacob wanted to make peace with his brother. He sent messengers ahead of him to tell Esau that he was returning. The messengers returned back and told Jacob that Esau was on his way, only this time with an army of 400 men. Must have been scary. What did Jacob do when hearing the news? He also he wanted to make things right, but he was scared. He was afraid his brother was going to wipe him out. So Esau sent many gifts of animals, like a whole lot of animals, like, uh, like hundreds of goats, uh, lambs, camels, cows, donkeys, lots of stuff. Before God changed him, Jacob just depended on himself. Instead of humbling himself and making things right with his dad and his brother, he ran away. He made his own plans and followed them instead of following God. Afterwards, Jacob depended on God. When Jacob heard Esau was coming to meet him with those 400 men, he was afraid. He thought they were going to wipe him out, but he was still obeying God and depending on him. He prayed to God and God assured Jacob that he would not be killed, but have a great future. When the two brothers finally saw each other, Esau ran to meet Jacob. They hugged each other and they wept. It was a good reunion. Jacob made a lot of mistakes. He struggled with God, but God made him a changed man. By the time he returned back to his hometown, he was different. His heart was different. God even changed Jacob's name to Israel, which means struggles with God. That's right. God was working on the inside of Jacob to change him into a better person, one who was more like God. He does the same for you and I, boys and girls, as we obey God and as we invite God to be at work in our lives. Mm -hmm. And boy, I'm really glad that Jacob made all those mistakes. You are? How come? Because I can learn from his mistakes and I don't have to make them myself. Yes, that's true, Mr. Pat. Learning from mistakes can be painful, but we can learn better through obeying God. That's why we're learning about this lesson today. We want to allow God to change us to make us more like Him. Jacob, in the beginning, didn't have a good relationship with God or with his family. But as he came to know God and obey God more and more, God changed him to make him a better person, somebody you and I would probably like to meet. That's right. And it is much better to learn from the wisdom of God's Word than to have them go through and, and make mistakes in their life, because that can be painful and hurtful and damaging. But God wants to bless us, and as we follow Him, we can be receptive to His blessings. Hey, Mr. Pat, I think it's a couple people's birthdays this week. Really? It is. This Saturday, Solomon is turning seven. That's right. Happy birthday, Solomon. Happy birthday, Solomon. And Cosette is turning 12. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Cosette. Cosette. Have a great week and a great new year with Jesus. We hope to see you all real soon. Real God soon. bless. God bless. Hey, boys and girls, how are you guys? I hope you're having a great week. I'm so sorry, but Emma's not with me today. She's over at her grandparents' house. She doesn't have school tomorrow, and so she's spending some time over at their house. So I'm just here by myself to share the Bible verse with you this week. So I don't know if you know this, but Valentine's Day is coming on Sunday. So if you're at church on Sunday, I will see you then and I will wish you a happy Valentine's Day. But if you can't make it to church at Sunday school on Sunday, then I'm wishing you one over the web right now. Mwah! So for the Bible verse this week, I thought it'd be fun to make a beautiful necklace. So that way you can wear it around your neck and you can remember the Bible verse that way. Or maybe you want to give it to somebody that doesn't know about Jesus and you can spread the love. So this week the Bible verse is, are you ready? It goes like this. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God not by works so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. This is one of my favorite Bible verses. I love this verse so much. So this week, you'll want to grab some string at your house. And I don't know about you, but Emma loves 
strings and beads and things like that. So we have a lot of little beads at our house, if you can see right there. And so I had her put on some beads and then we took some bright colored paper and we folded it and we cut a heart out. And we printed the Bible verse. Look, I have some here too. And Mr. Pat will attach the Bible verse. So if you want to do this at home, you can. So what he did, or what we did is we glued the Bible verse on and we strung some beads into a necklace. And so here's the Bible verse for the week. I hope you can memorize it and share it and spread it all around. Have a wonderful week and I will see you guys soon. Bye, happy Valentine's Day. Early, he chose his way instead of following God's way. And now, after Jacob was obedient to God, when God told Jacob to go back to his home in Bethel, and he obeyed God. Before God changed Jacob, Jacob was dishonest, a deceiver and a tricker, and deceived his own dad to receive God's special blessing. Now, Jacob was a peacemaker. Jacob wanted to make peace with his brother. He sent messengers ahead of him to tell Esau that he was returning. Before God changed him, Jacob just depended on himself. Instead of humbling himself and making things right with his dad and his brother, he ran away. He made his own plans and followed them instead of following God. Afterwards, Jacob depended on God. When Jacob heard Esau was coming to meet him with those 400 men, he was afraid. He prayed to God and God assured Jacob that he would not be killed but have a great future. When the two brothers finally saw each other, Esau ran to meet Jacob. That's right, and it is much better to learn from the wisdom of God's Word than to have to go through and, and make mistakes in our life, because that can be painful and hurtful and damaging. But God wants to bless us, and as we follow Him, we can be receptive to His blessings.